Hello, uh, my name is Badri Hammond. I'm responsible for commercial op operations for Aptar CSP. And today I will be talking to you about a new way of thinking about active packaging solution, focusing on a material science based solution, um, hoping to address some new challenges and a way to overcome them using active packaging solutions. A uh, couple things about Aptar CSP. Um, this is the latest division that joined Aptar Group uh, in August 2018. It is the material science specialist. Uh, it focuses on delivering innovative, highly engineered active packaging solutions headquartered in, in the US, in Alabama, and with manufacturing sites uh, in France and soon to be in China. Um, it manufactures about a billion components globally, and it has a wide-ranging portfolio of patents, uh, the vast majority of which will be addressed in the next few slides as we move forward. So the, the, the core technology of Optar CSP is based on the three-phase active polymer. So you'll be hearing this throughout the slide, the three-phase active polymer. And what we mean by that is the, the, the technology is based on three phases of material science chemistry acting in different ways to deliver a complete solution. So as you see here, uh, the base polymer is called the majority polymer. And that's what it gives the shape and form of the configuration. The active particle, which is the active ingredient that is performing the activity, whether it's scavenging in oxygen or absorbing the moisture or delivering a specific chemistry into the matrix. And then, uh, uh, more importantly, there is an element of minority polymer, which is a channeling agent. The channeling agent is able to manage the distribution of the active particle in and out of the three-phase active polymer in order to perform a specific activity. And I'll give you an example of that as we move forward. So the way to, to think about the three-phase active polymer, we talked about uh, a base polymer, which you would see here. We talked about the channeling agent, which these are these spaces where the active particle goes in and out of the matrix. This is a, a, a scanning electron microscopy, a, a view of it. The orange uh, uh, particles is the active component. The base polymer is this gray area. And then these kind of cylindrical spaces are depicting the channeling agent. This is really what drives the movement of the particles in and out of, of the matrix. So this is sort of a nice view of the chemistry that's going on inside uh, uh, the matrix. Here's another view of it to show you the base polymer, the active component, these yellow particles, and then channeling agent, these cylindrical blue uh, um, depictions inside this three-phase active polymer. So hopefully this gives you an idea as you think about what does the structure of the chemistry looks like. And then when we talk about the active particle, what it does, it, it has multiple uses and it depends on the application that we are pursuing. So for example, it can, it can absorb moisture um, in a gas phase. It could uh, absorb an impurity or an odor or a formaldehyde or any type of volatile <clears throat> compounds that this technology can, can perform. <clears throat> or in some cases, you want to release something into, um, into the, the, the headspace, into the, the, the package or container, whatever you're trying to do. In that case, you would want to release an aroma, a biocide, or uh, uh, um, carbon dioxide or, 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 or scavenging an oxygen of a chemical. Or in some cases, you can have a gas diffusion. We're also working on a solution for antimicrobial properties that is released into the headspace.
So I just mentioned headspace, and this is really key in, in, in the way you think about this technology in terms of headspace management. And, and, and what we mean by that is that you're really able to manage the rate and the kinetic with which a particular solution is uh, microclimate is managed. So for example, if you look at this graph here, we, uh, which kind of gives you an indication of customized absorption rate, and we can actually uh, um, change the level and the molecular weight and impact of the channeling agent to either have a faster absorption, lower absorption, or a stable absorption, depending on how fast you want to pick up the, 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 the moisture, on how low do you want to manage that space. And that obviously depends on the stability requirement it depends on the particular indication application and also the geography in which the particular product is being delivered same thing on the oxygen scavenging customization the rate with which the scavenging of oxygen occurs depends largely on the amount of capacity built into the active component and in the matrix as as a whole So for this to work, it is important that you have a headspace that is tightly sealed. So if you, if you look at this configuration on the right, you have, think of this as a, as a, an, a, a package where you have the product uh, of whatever you're protecting and you have this headspace in the middle, which is where the chemistry is occurring. This is where you either are, uh, uh, absorbing moisture, releasing gas or aromas or scavenging oxygen. So this is where we operate inside the head space. Uh, think of this as a microclimate that is being managed, customized to deliver specific stability requirement. For this to work, the head space must be tightly sealed. If it is open to the environment, it's going to reach capacity very quickly. This is one of the things that we do, which is ensuring that we account for the opening and closing of a specific finished product, and we put enough capacity that is calculated to account for and adjust for the numbers of openings and closure. We call this in-use stability, which is very important. Now, as I mentioned, a tightly seed environment is key. The three-phase active polymer occurs around the active component inside the package. And that is really a complete solution uh, that is driven by the headspace management, the size of the headspace, the frequency of opening and closing, and also the type of chemistry we're trying to achieve. So we think, we think of our technology as a material science-based platform technology that is delivered in different configurations. Uh, it can be injection molded, it can be thermoform, or it could be an active film, which allows us to have flexibility in delivery systems, or it could be a blue molded uh, extrusion, which can be inside bottles of different shapes, or it can be a hot melt, meaning that it can be a, a thin layer of active film that is flexible and, and customized in different packaging configurations. The same chemistry and the same uh, uh, effort in terms of releasing an application would be moisture control, scavenging, antimicrobial emitters, odor remover. This really doesn't change. What changes is the way you are delivering the product. And the next slide will give you a good indication of, of this solution. Just picking up on what I just mentioned, the platform technology is delivered in different configuration. And if you think about um, the application fields that we support, uh, an example starting from the left or a solid dose, this is using an active film application for an oral dose product. This is an example of immunodeficiency treatment that's in the market. It could be a transdermal application in which we deliver an active film inside the package of a transdermal product. 
It could be in a drug delivery form in case of an oral solid dose, but this, this is specific to uh, an antifungal application. Or it could be diagnostic where we are delivering the uh, three-phase active polymer inside the vial that's protecting um, glucose strips to improve and maintain accurate readings or a probiotics where you are delivering the solution inside the vial to maintain stability of the uh, colony forming units you have used inside a probiotic. Or it could be a medical device, in this case, an implant, where the implant itself is protected internally to, to, to manage the microclimate inside the implant and ensure that the readings and the uh, electronics inside the implant uh, are uh, uh, effective and performing over a number of years, depending on the indication. So now I'll, I will spend the next few slides talking about specific application fields where this technology occurs. So we'll have some data, and I believe this would be very helpful to adding some context to, to the solution. So starting by thinking about the existing uh, solutions in in the context of or solid dose. Uh, some drug uh, products, some formulations um, are being protected today using just a sachet. Uh, obviously it reaches moisture pretty uh, capacity pretty quickly. This is typically tends to be used for um, APIs that are not sensitive to moisture. And it has uh, some complexity for the end user. Sometimes it's inside the package, like convenient. But more importantly, it doesn't give you the protection you need for specific drugs. Uh, there are fishbone designs where you actually put the uh, um, you put the the, uh, the active particles uh, or or, or sachet-like um, silicate gel material inside these uh, pockets. Uh, and that provides some level of protection to the capsules. Again, it adds material to the size and it makes it larger than it needs to be. Another solution is what we call, what is called cold form. Here you really, this is the most level of protection provided to a, a sensitive drug. Uh, it is a good barrier, uh, but what it doesn't do, it, it doesn't capture the residual moisture that comes with the drug inside the uh, configuration. And, and what I mean by that is that when a drug is being manufactured from um, production all the way to packaging, it is picking up moisture as it as it moves into these different stages. And when it gets packaged, it is packaged with its existing residual moisture that comes with the uh, with the capsule or tablet. That big, it, what this solution does is protects it from external environment. Whatever internal environment that, that the drug came with stays with uh, uh, with the drug product. So effective, but with some limitations as well. And then uh, uh, nit nitrogen purging solutions, which is a common way to remove oxygen from the headspace. Uh, it does have manufacturing challenges. It has time to line uh, uh, stoppages, difficult to validate. It has some impact on the drug product itself. And the inherent safety when you're dealing with uh, nitrogen uh, uh, purge. And it doesn't really address, as I mentioned earlier, the ingress that occurs um, from the outside beyond the, the purge uh, um, that, that occurs at T times zero, if you will. So it is still going to continue to pick up oxygen uh, um, beyond uh, the nitrogen purge. So uh, as most of us know, moisture comes in from the outside into the head space, uh, or it is comes with the drug product itself. Uh, oxygen is the same way, and I mentioned the residual of oxygen or moisture is going to be uh, something key for us to address. Uh, most of the current solutions address the external environment, but the internal environment is really where 
there is an unmet need, which we'll talk about here shortly. So I mentioned water, same thing, unmet need around the residual. So one uh, uh, way, and I mentioned active film earlier and or solid dose approval that's been in the marketplace, what this active film solution does, it provides management of the microclimate inside the headspace of the capsule or tablet by providing customized, fully integrated active film blister. We call it active blisters on the foil itself to be able to manage the headspace via moisture absorption or oxygen scavenging or whatever other um, sensitive requirement is needed by the particular API. So what's really key about this, it is a fully integrated solution. The user does not have uh, to uh, overcome any barrier in managing and using the drug product. It's fairly simple to use. What's key here is that it does not add another complexity to the patient to use the drug product. And in addition to the active film solution, there is no adhesive uh, required to make this uh, active film integrated into uh, a blister line. It, need, it uses um, uh, a pre-qualified, pre-designed film applicator, which allows, you see it here, which allows the active film to be seamlessly integrated by a heat staking mechanism, which occurs behind the foil that you see here. This is a proprietary technology that we have developed to integrate and avoid using adhesive, which sometimes can have complexity around extractables, which allows the film to be uh, seamlessly integrated uh, onto the foil via heat staking process that we've developed. And we have been, we've done a, a lot of activities that demonstrated that we are not causing any additional uh, uh, degradants uh, to the finished product as a result of, or impurity as a result of this process. So uh, that's something that is avoided when you're not using adhesive uh, to the process. This is an example of, of a joint study we did with uh, um, FreeThink and PCI, one of our manufacturing partners. We looked at thermoforming configurations, which is the standard thermoforming configuration that you see for any or sort of those product that you see in the marketplace. Uh, we looked at cold form and we did different formulations of the active film. And we did a basic uh, um, uh, three uh, time points, one, three, and six months, at different um, temperature and RH conditions. And here, just give you a snapshot of the results. If you look at 3065, the active blister formulation one and two uh, have outperformed the no. Uh, it's a basic thermoform without the active film. And it also outperformed the aluminum on aluminum cold form foil, which is right now is the most effective uh, protection available in the market. As I mentioned earlier, it does not address the residual moisture or, or presence of oxygen. So what this demonstrates is that the level of percent degradants was far reduced when looking at active blister formulation one and active blister formulation two, and then aloe, aloe right here, and then there were no uh, uh, active film protection at all just a basic thermoforming configuration. So clearly there is an advantage that you could uh, uh, secure to avoid degradants, which result into extractables, which ultimately can be leached into your drug product. Same thing at 75 RH. Uh, it's a little bit uh, higher with, with 75 RH, which makes sense. Uh, same level of performance compar in comparison with the uh, existing solutions. And this is 4075, which is the uh, what we call this accelerated conditions. When you want to file a product to the regulators, you have to do room temperature, intermediate conditions, and accelerated conditions. 
accelerator conditions is the sort of the uh, the go no go for the drug product. You got to be able to uh, be, meet six months of that stability with uh, 40 75. And you can see this is a really good uh, depiction of the performance. You can see that the percent degree has increased to 35% compared to uh, active film, which close to less than 5%, both on both active film formulations. And then still better than the uh, cold foam that we mentioned. So clearly uh, a very effective way to manage the headspace and protect the, uh, uh, the product. So I'll talk now about how this technology delivers value for probiotics. So these probiotics are just some examples of where we today were active or supporting different types of products. Uh, picking out a couple of them of interest, this is Biogia, where it's an oil-based probiotic. Uh, these are powders that have to remain dry and active before they are uh, uh, um, submerged in water to before consumption and the rest are a mixture of sachets tablets uh, or capsules inside probiotic in the most uh, widely available configuration that we're all familiar with so the basic principle uh, of the probiotic application with our technology is the ability to create an integrated active polymer that is um, molded in the same at the same time as you're making the out the outer packaging and what this does here creates a microclimate you'll hear me see that word a lot because it is important because it does create a microclimate inside the vial the package the headspace you are protecting the product from the external environment and also from the internal environment where the, the, the capsule tablet comes with probiotics are naturally uh, uh, inherently sensitive to moisture because the CFUs, which is the colony forming units, which are the actual active uh, uh, probiotic that are uh, the, the, the flora that is actually delivering the, the benefits of probiotics are inherently, um, inherently sensitive to, to moisture what this what this product does it protects it from the external environment and internal environment so it comes in different configuration different sizes it does have a proprietary patented uh, closed in the mold which means that this um, polymer inside the vial is actually integrated and uh, linked in one uh, um, manufacturing process we call it a two-shot mold and this is something that uh, uh, unique to to CSP. Uh, this is a, a this is a, a different way to protect the probiotic using active film. What you see here are different configurations of thermoforming, and these are thermoforming applications with active film. As you can see, the impact of data to saturation is largely driven by the type of uh, the thermoform used. In this case, the uh, um, the six, the Ocular 6000 plus active film provides you uh, years of, of, of protection in terms of data saturation. And you want to, you know, this is largely driven by the amount of active film you put in, the type of the thermoformin, which is this element ar around the capsule, and also the type of probiotic. So this is where the customization really becomes key because it is only as good as identifying, understanding, studying what is the, the probiotic you're protecting. Some don't need a lot of protection, some, some need a lot. So it is important that you demonstrate uh, and create a customization solution to address the probiotic uh, in its final form. <clears throat> this is some data courtesy with Merica, one of our uh, uh, partners in this space. Uh, water activity, as I mentioned, is the the enemy of, of probiotic efficacy. You could see here that our active film solution lower water activity is is 150% uh, less than than the control, which translates into uh, a more stable, a more efficacious probiotic product. This is a demonstration of the billion of CFUs. When you pick up a probiotic, you typically see 
X numbers of million or billions of CFUs. What you will be able to, 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 to claim using the CSP solution is you can actually have guaranteed number of CFUs per capsule as a result of the active film solution in your capsule. This is really important for consumers that they are making purchasing decisions based on stability of the uh, of the probiotic, which is connected with the CFUs per capsule. So you can see here there is a lot more uh, uh, stability in the CFUs per pill uh, as a result of the control without it. Uh, this is another configuration. Here we're talking about uh, active film in a stick pack. So these are basic stick from will be heat stick inside the product. As you can see, the uh, the water activity is here, um, and the active film clearly demonstrate that there is less water activity uh, with the active film compared to without the active film. So at eight weeks, you could see the reduction of water activity is much, much better with the active film. And you can see the size makes a difference. So higher size of the active film, this is the thickness of the film, which means also the, the, the amount of, of the active particle have a, a direct impact on the amount of water activity, which is again, affect the CFUs in, in, the, uh, in the, the vial, the powder, or whatever configuration of the probiotic is. This is another good view to demonstrate the impact of the culture stability. Um, and you can see here that without the active film uh, comparison, you're really you're, you're losing quite a bit compared to the um, the active film solution at different sizes. This is from partnership with GLAC, one of the leading producers of, uh, of probiotics in Asia. Uh, this is an example of uh, probiotic in oil, and here we're using the same technology uh, or CSP is provided a molded component inside the probiotic, and you can see that the, the stability, the level of decay of the stability of the CFUs or the activity of the probiotic drops significantly compared to the, um, the CSP solution in the probiotic. Quite significant. Now we're moving into uh, active vial components for probiotic solutions. This is, when, I, when we say active vial, this is a basic container. And then we have our molded three-phase active polymer component that is uh, integrated inside the vial. This is a study with our uh, uh, partnership with UAS Labs, one of the leading CMOs in the probiotic space. Here you can see on x-axis, um, time uh, uh, 36, 36 months stability study, level of water activity. And here the CSP vial at 3065 um, compared to at 2565 are much better than the aluminum, aluminum blisters. And also they are much better than in both 2560 and 30 and 3065. You can see here the water activity is much lower than the aloe aloe, which is what I what we call cold forms. Easy way to think of it is a cold form. So better performance, less than 0.05 all the way out of 36 months compared to um, uh, the cold form solution. Another view, another view of the impact of uh, the CSP vial compared to a cold form. Here we've got um, the colony forming units compared to time, number of with aloe aloe, the CFUs are dropping. Here, this is the inverse. You're looking at the amount of, of loss, and this is the amount of stability of the CFU uh, in this particular configuration. Here you're looking again at another uh, um, product. We're looking at 3065 versus 2560. You can see a precipitous drop at the higher temperature. 
which makes sense. And then still <clears throat> the CSP vial is outperforming the uh, one of the existing solutions. This is an active CSP active vial versus the uh, a basic glass vial with a, a sachet desiccant, which we mentioned earlier. The CSP solution here, we're looking at water activity. So we want to have less water activity. That's important. So the CSP sits right here uh, at 25, uh, 65 ambient conditions uh, compared to a basic glass vial, glass jar. Uh, with uh, desiccant. So less water activity compared to um, the current one of the current solutions. This is uh, another way to, to look at this data, thinking about CFUs. This is colony forming units, again, which is the amount of activity per, uh, per capsule or tablet. Here you can see that the uh, the Aptar CSP. This is just a glass vial with desiccant. This is Aptar CSP. Much better performance in terms of the activity of the CFU compared to the uh, glass vial at 2560. And here at uh, um, higher temperature, again, the same uh, level of performance of CSP that's much higher. So now I'll go into a new application field that we are spending a lot of uh, uh, time success, but particularly with the pandemic, where we're seeing ways to, where we can integrate the active film. This is a partnership that we have had with, with Quidel, one of the leading diagnostic solutions so the, the active film is presented in this configure. It is able to ensure that the accuracy of diagnostic is maintained. So when we have what this active film embedded right here, this part where they call the absorbent pad, our active film solution is embedded in this space. What this does, it removes moisture from this active component, which is the element that is used to capture the sample uh, for test. What this does, it improves the accuracy of the reading and also helps maintaining uh, dryness uh, in that environment. And it does not, it, you can't tell it's there, so it's seamless to, to, to the user, and it does not uh, need uh, an adhesive for it to be applied. So you can see this is what the actual product actually looks like here on the right. Uh, the active film is located uh, under the brand name here of the product itself. So it is really key to the performance and I'll show you uh, uh, this data, which is really interesting. The average positive test line retention, meaning that the ability for the, um, the positivity rate is improved largely based on the use of this, of this technology. So you can see here that it drops significantly at multiple weeks uh, without the active film technology, which obviously has direct impact uh, on, on the accuracy of the reading. And you can only imagine how key this would be when you're trying to have pandemic-related uh, testing to ensure that you are having the highest rate of accuracy of testing. This is another uh, uh, data point here, looking at uh, average positive test line retention. Here, another, uh, uh, this is at uh, week C. This was six weeks. Uh, this is 10 weeks at 45 C. Again, um, with the active film, much better data uh, than uh, much better accuracy uh, than without the active film. Now I move into medical device application field. Uh, and here, uh, this is one of our most exciting uh, application fields in the med medical device space. Here we are working on implantable medical devices. So it's a 
it's a busy slide, but it just kind of gives you a sense of the different types of implants that are uh, currently using our technology. Uh, they range from pacemakers, implantable cardio converter, um, cardio synchronization therapy, uh, neuromodulations. All of these technologies are actually uh, implanted into the, the, the body of the patient. So obviously maintenance of accuracy and data capture and efficacy uh, drives everything else that, that, that is needed for this particular application. So what we do here is if we take this, uh, uh, the same technology that we mentioned earlier, it is delivered in different configuration, but it is produced, configured specific to the design of the implant. So if, as an example, if you have an implant that requires to have a specific area where you need to maintain a highly protected level of microclimate inside the implant, we would deliver a bespoke customized solution that goes inside the implant. Uh, obviously, it depends on the size of the film, the thickness, and obviously the duration of the, the, the lifetime of the product that needs to be used in, in uh, implanted in the patient. So it's a unique, highly critical, highly engineered solution where it has to be perfect because this is obviously uh, an implanted solution. Moving to drug, uh, dermal drug delivery. And here, this is a, an interesting uh, way to deliver the same properties of, of, the, of the product without, uh, um, with a different configuration, meaning that here, our solution delivers this molded component of the active polymer. Here, what we are protecting is a microRNA patch. And this microRNA patch is um, delivers a biological solution using these very tiny microneedles. So their ability to deliver a well-distributed amount of active ingredient in different areas of the patch depends on the protective and the robustness of the complete package. So what we deliver here is the ability to have reproducible drug delivery and inherently stable solution. So in this case, not only are we delivering the active polymer, which you see in this yellow uh, uh, configuration, we're also delivering the complete solution, which is the actuated uh, um, product and also inherently embedded inside the um, dermal drug delivery. You could see that we are delivering uh, um, a very effective and easy to use finished product. This is really a, as close to a finished product as we have been. And this is a, a company called Baxis that we're working with and they are in late stage clinical trials. Another uh, uh, dermal applications in this case, this is uh, what we call an active delivery system, meaning that a user has to actually actuate um, the delivery system. What we are making here is these, these components. Uh, some of them are not active poly uh, polymer solutions. And uh, one element here is tough to see, but this is this brown area, which is sits right below the um, the microneedle where the active ingredient is deposited. This is what we protect, and then we created this subassembly system for the user to deliver uh, the, the, the 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 dermal application. Another application in the dermal space, this is for oxygen scavenging uh, of, a, of a dermal applied microarray. Here, what we, you see, we are embedded inside the package, the dermal, where the active particles and the ingredients are, are inside the package. We are protecting and removing oxygen. In this particular application, oxygen has been uh, a cause of concern in terms of degradation. So this has been a solution that, that, that uh, overcome that. And this product has been approved for many years. So we're pretty excited to be part of, of this solution. 
And here, uh, the last application field that I'll talk about is inhaled drug delivery. So focusing on inhalation, and uh, uh, mainly MDIs and DPIs. If you look at a reservoir-based DPI, this is uh, um, a very well-established reservoir DPI. Uh, it's brand product. Sometimes you see it as a, a, a twist haler or Asmanex. Um, what we've done here, we've created uh, an active component that is molded with active polymer that is designed to remove moisture. So obviously a reservoir powder, the powder is loose in at the bottom of the DPI. But what this solution here is, sits really inside the reservoir DPI, at the bottom piece of this here, right below the dose indicator. And this allows the reservoir powder that's sitting at the bottom of the DPI to remain moisture free or at least minimize moisture to a level that it does not affect the uh, dispersion profile of the drug product. In this case here, this is for um, uh, a meter dose inhaler, which I'll talk about in the next slide. And this is uh, for one of our uh, R&D program looking at dropout or inhaler, multi-dose dropout or inhaler. This piece right here that you see at the bottom of the device is the active polymer. Uh, component which protects the DPI inside the blister packaging configuration of the uh, the DPI. And here's the Juna pick it up on the MDI that I just talked about. So the MDI itself uh, has continuous actuation uh, based on the patient uh, uh, indication. So it is essentially there's a can uh, and an actuator. And a patient actuates each time it actuates, it releases uh, suspended particles. And after each particle, there is some moisture buildup that occurs around the nozzle and the stem of the valve of the, of the MDI. And one way to do that, to protect and, and reduce level of moisture buildup around the nozzle and the stem uh, of the valve of the MDI, is to figure out a way to keep this moisture um, uh, absorbed, captured. And what, what this provides, it, it enables the, um, the patient to have re reproducibility of the dose, meaning that if the MDI has 200 doses, it means that dose 1, 50, 100, and 200 are about the same. And that's really key. The shot weight is about the same. And the buildup that tends to occur around the, the, the nozzle uh, of the, the meter involved, the stem tends to have moisture buildup. So the, the atomizing nozzle gets clogged sometimes, or sometimes it, it just picks up moisture. So you can see dose 1, 50, and 100 are, are, are different. So one solution that we're evaluating, so we're creating this active polymer packaging solution where the, the whole uh, MDI is actually um, housed inside these configurations. You can see it's capturing, you would capture moisture uh, after each use, or in some cases we have a, a program where an, act, an, an MDI dose inhaler component is actually uh, built in and designed to sit around the MDI to have an integrated component to capture moisture from the, the, no, the uh, atomizing nozzle of the MDI. So different ways to provide different solutions to protect, enhance the performance of finished products. So what I've tried to do uh, in, in, in the past slide is to give you that, that perspective. And to close here with a, a, a product that's already approved in the marketplace, this is protecting a rescue medication for, uh, to treat hypoglycemia. This is a nasal powder by Abtar Pharma. And our solution is the active polymer, which sits around the, the nozzle of the nasal, uh, nasal DPI. And what, what we are protecting here is the powder that's inside the device and also creating a very effective and um, robust design of the vial itself in terms of opening and closing and a very seamless integrated, this is the, a cross-section of the vial where you could see 
the active vial, uh, the active component integrated inside the vial, as you can see. So, so what I try to do here is give you a full suite of ways to think about active package solution in a different way, ways to use material science in, in, and deliver it in different, in different configurations to provide multiple uses for different applications. So I hope that gives you a perspective of what the company does. Uh, it's data heavy, and it's important that we engage on a specific need because the customization is really part of the process here. So with that, I, I'll leave you with, uh, with the rest of, of the uh, presentations that are gonna be coming after me. And I'm happy to, to uh, answer questions or, or discussion items. Um, you have my email information. Looking forward to hearing from you all. So thanks so much.